In the past few years, I've released with around 20 different lo-fi labels under my artist name, Mo. And while releasing with a label isn't necessarily for everyone on every single track, it's been a huge help for me in growing my own little audience. And a few years ago, I had no idea that this ecosystem even existed, let alone how it all worked. So today, I want to save you guys as much trouble as I can and tell you everything that I know about lo-fi labels, including what they can provide, where you can find them, how you can submit, what to expect when you submit and hopefully get accepted. And then I think most importantly, what are some of the things that I think you should watch out for? Because there is a little bit of sketchy stuff going on out there and I don't want anyone to get left high and dry. So definitely stick around for the end of the video because that's gonna be some really important stuff I'm gonna be talking about. But first, let's talk about what exactly lo-fi labels can offer you for your own music. A good lo-fi label is essentially an entity that has already put in the work to be a brand or a place that people are going to get lo-fi music, right? So because lo-fi is generally considered background music, people are in large part just going to places like playlists or YouTube channels that they already know about or that pop up in the search bar and throwing the music on in the background. So. A lo-fi label is essentially someone that's already done the work to get the audience of people that are doing that and is offering you a chance to be featured on their playlist and towards their audience. So the big 30,000 foot overview, most important thing a label can really provide you is exposure to their already built audience, but that's not the only thing that they're giving you. In my opinion, good labels are also doing a lot of work beyond just putting it in the labels they own. They'll spend a little bit of their own money to pitch it to other playlist curators or reach out to their network of friends that own popular playlists. They'll also do a little bit in the marketing side to sort of help you out with your cover art. Some of them will just make cover art custom for every single release they do. Some have a bank of cover arts that you can select from, and some just ask for your input or maybe you would make your own. It sort of depends. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different. But with that cover art, a lot of times they'll make you some nice little animations to go with your song as a promotional material. And then of course, they're throwing things up on their community posts, on their Instagrams and you know their discords and other YouTube channels that promotes you and helps you grow your personal brand among other lo-fi producers. Which brings me to my next point of where exactly you can find these lo-fi labels. So in general, this whole ecosystem basically lives on Instagram and Discord. So if you're not on either one of those platforms, you need to get on it right now. I would make an account that is your artist name and just do all of your dealings with labels and other producers under that artist name. I am literally breaking that rule with this YouTube channel right now uh, because I make a bunch of different types of music, but generally it's a good idea to just be consistent with your branding so that people know you from Instagram and then we see you on Discord, they know that you're the same you. Yeah, maybe do as I say, not as I do in this case. But yeah, so Instagram and Discord, that's the home of it all. That's where you need to be if you really wanna get involved in the scene. Um, but when it comes to actually finding the accounts that are worth following and finding the servers to join, I've got a little trick that I think will help you get things off the ground. And then I've got a really useful tool that I wanna show you that will help you find a whole bunch basically right away. So what I like to do when I'm sort of mining for new lo-fi labels or just basically keeping an eye out for how things are looking is I'll go to another artist that has a pretty similar style as me and I'll just basically go into their discography and look at their latest releases. If you click on any of these releases and you look down below where the song is, there's information from the label and the publisher that if you say release with DistroKid, for example, and you have the slightly higher price tier, you can set your own label name in this case, if someone's released with a label, you can see the name of the label down here. So once I found an artist that has a style similar to what I'm hoping to create, and I've noticed a label that they released with, so in this case, Everdream was who I just dropped this song with uh, today as I'm recording this, which I think is yesterday. The first place I go is Instagram, and I'll type in exactly what the label's called, Everdream in this case. Something pops up with Everdream Records and they happen to be followed by 23 of the other people that I also follow. So it's a pretty good sign that they're who I'm looking for. We look in their bio, it says they're a record label. And just like that, they've got a link that says exactly where to submit your music. We click on their link tree. It opens up quite a few options and right within the link tree, just as you may expect, there's an option to join their Discord server. 
This is gonna be a pretty consistent experience with a lot of lo-fi labels, but definitely not always. So in general, I think that's a great approach to finding new labels that maybe are up and coming or maybe aren't included in the tool I'm about to show you. But if you're looking to get a huge list right away in exactly how and where to submit, this is an awesome tool made by Odd Panda, who's the A&R over at Fortune Cookie Records. I think he did a great job um, basically breaking down a bunch of different labels, how you can contact them, what type of songs they accept, what submission style they prefer, what sounds they prefer, and even a lot of their websites and Discord links that are kind of broken down um, in these later columns. I forgot to mention that I'm linking this in the description of the video. So if you want this spreadsheet, just it, it's right there. Feel free to grab it, save it, bookmark it. Uh, it's super useful. So anyway, back to it. So I think this is a good chance to talk exactly about how to submit to lo-fi labels. So it's important to remember that every label is going to handle things differently. You can see from this column that sometimes they want you to send them an email, sometimes they want you to fill out a submission form, and sometimes there's a ticketing system on their Discord. Just pay attention to what they're asking for and do it. All you have to do is follow the instructions, but I do hear about a lot of people not following simple instructions. So don't be one of those people. It's not a great look. It doesn't make you someone that they're looking forward to working with if you just can't do the first thing that they ask you to do. So try to be careful with that part of the process because submissions are essentially your first impression of what's gonna be an ongoing relationship. So once you've had a song hopefully accepted for release with a label, there's gonna be a few things that are pretty standard across labels and that's gonna be getting your contact information, a way to pay you, possibly some information for tax, tax purposes, and then usually a contract that specifically spells out the terms of your agreement. In general, they're going to talk about the royalty splits where, you know, I personally see anything from like a 70, 30, sometimes even an 80, 20, if they're generous, down to a 50, 50 split with a label. And what that's going to mean is that all the money that the label receives from streaming platforms will be split according to whatever percentage is spelled out in the contract. It's important to note that depending on the distributor that they use, there could be some percentage of royalties taken out by the distributor before the label even receives it. So maybe if you're doing mental math in your head, seeing the stream numbers, you might be expecting a little bit more than actually comes in the mail, but that doesn't mean you're being ripped off. Just pay attention to the terms of the contract. Which sort of brings me to what I think might be worth watching out for in some of these contracts. It's definitely the exception, but there are some shady things going on and you definitely don't want to be taken advantage of. One thing that I've been seeing sort of a lot of chatter about that is super unfortunate is something called recoupments. Recoupments by themselves are not like an evil practice. It doesn't automatically make a label a bad label, but recoupments should be reasonable, right? And so what a recoupment is, is essentially the label says that we are gonna front X amount of dollars for promotional budget or to you know have um, art commissioned or something like that. So let's say the label says we're going to spend $50 on Instagram, Facebook ads, and playlist pitching for this song specifically. And then in return for that spend, they're going to take the first $50, the 100% of the first $50, and then everything earned after that will be split according to the percentage that's spelled out in the contract. It's not super common, but in that case, that wouldn't raise any huge red flags for me. It would start to feel like a red flag though if they're asking for say a $2,000 recoupment because now all of a sudden they're claiming that they're gonna put enough money in to guarantee 500,000 streams at least and then you can get your split. But I don't know, there've been some murmurings here and there that a few labels you know, get you up close to that number and then all of a sudden the streams go away. I don't know, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying it wasn't me, but Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a red flag. Maybe it's a red flag. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, just watch out for that. That's something to pay attention to. But the other thing that I think is really important to watch out for is bots. And this doesn't matter if you're releasing with labels or if you're self-releasing and trying to pitch to playlists. Something Spotify is really cracking down on is people using bots to inflate their stream numbers or to generate artificial streams. I've seen a few people you know, end up on a playlist that they didn't even submit to that had botted activity and had their music taken off Spotify altogether because of it. So it's no joke, but it's something you want to watch out for. And I want to show you one other tool that I think is super helpful with this exact issue. So it's just this artist.tools where essentially you can copy the link to any Spotify playlist 
and based on you know a bunch of publicly available data it's trying to determine whether it's likely that this playlist is botted or not so let's just check a playlist i'm featured on right now lo-fi beats lo-fi bart there's 56 000 likes copy the link pop it in here and you can see in this case it seems bot free which is great news so all the streams being generated off this playlist seem to be from real people so you know they disclosed directly on the website that they can't be 100 percent accurate but i think it's pretty cool what they're doing is basically just looking at uh, the number of artists that are featured in any given playlist uh, and seeing what percentage of them have this playlist pop up on their discovered on section so uh, to me that feels like a reasonable indicator that real human beings are finding you know artists they haven't found otherwise but again, it's not 100% accurate, but perhaps this could give you some peace of mind if you get put on a playlist that maybe shoots your listeners way up. Throw it in this tool, which I will also link in the description, just to make sure. Because if you do end up on a playlist, especially if you didn't pitch to it, it would really stink to have your music pulled off Spotify for something that you didn't do anything wrong. Um, but I think things are gonna be a little bit messy for a little while on this front, so this might be something good to keep an eye on for a little bit. But yeah, that's all the little knowledge nuggets I think I've got on this topic. I hope it was sensible and easy enough to follow. I felt a bit disorganized as I was talking through all of this. Uh, but yeah, if you did find it helpful um, and you think you're gonna play around with some lo-fi labels, definitely leave a comment, let me know, and feel free to tell me if you have any questions. Uh, I'm an open book. I don't want to keep anything from anybody. I really just want to help you guys grow as best as I can. Um, so yeah, thank you for stopping by. If you liked the video, think, dude, we just hit a thousand. I didn't even celebrate. We just hit a thousand subscribers. Did you notice that? Like, like right down, like where it probably, I'm going to point to both sides and edit myself pointing correctly as if I knew where it was. But if we went, if you look there, it's, I think it's like a one point something would, I mean, I just thank you guys. Honestly, thank you. That means so much. I just want to keep helping you guys making what uh, you want me to make. So please let me know what you'd like to see me make next. And I hope to see you back here next week. Peace.